The top stories tonight in Y News. A Chinese embassy executive maintains that the Philippines made a commitment to tow away the BRP Sierra Madre from the Ayungin Shoal. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. orders the Department of Education to conduct a study on how to provide a long-term salary increase for teachers. State Weather Bureau Pagasa logs a record-breaking heat index in Aurora Town. And asylum seekers on the Bibi Stockholm barge evacuate after a harmful bacteria known as Legionella was found on board. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Monday, the 14th of August, 2023. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am William Theo. We are also seen in 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UN TV News and Rescue social media channels. I am Harding Delgado. First in the news, a Chinese embassy official remains firm that the Philippine government made a promise to remove the grounded ship in Ayungin Shoal. However, several personalities are quick to deny the allegation that it was former President Joseph Estrada who made the supposed commitment. Harding Delgado details why. Deputy Chief of Mission of Chinese Embassy in Manila, Zhou Ziyong, maintains that the Philippines made a commitment to tow away the BRP Sierra Madre from Ayungin Shoal. In a forum today, the official claims the Chinese side requested the Philippine government to remove the grounded ship in 1999. The Chinese side lost solemn representations immediately, requesting the Philippine side to tow away the vessel. The Philippine side also made explicit commitments to do so. It's been 24 years, and the Philippine side is yet to honor its commitments. He also maintains that Ayungin Shoal, which they refer to as Renai Reef, is part of China's Nansha Islands. The Chinese official also claims that in 2021, the two governments had a consensus on the resupply missions to Ayungin Shoal, but the Philippines allegedly refused to abide by this beginning this year. He adds that they provided the Philippines with a draft proposal on how to address the issue, but has yet to receive a response from the Philippine government. The Department of Foreign Affairs has yet to comment on China's claims. In an online article, article of former presidential spokesperson Rigoberto Tinglao, it alleged that it was former President Joseph Era Estrada who made the promise to China that the grounded ship will be removed. However, Estrada's lawmaker's son, Senator Jingoy Estrada and J.V. Ejercito denied the claim. Estrada says he spoke with former Defense Secretary Orly Mercado, who confirmed that no such promise nor any agreement was made under the Estrada administration. It was in 1999, during Estrada's term, when BRP Sierra Madre was stationed in Nayu. Well, of course, he cannot remember that anymore. If he indeed made that promise, bakit hindi yung mga succeeding administrations after my father? If that is really binding, and this is all hearsay. Uh, that's uh, very inconsistent, and common sense tells us it was President Joseph Estrada who ordered that PRP Sierra Madre be grounded in Ayungin Shoal. So, paano naman siya rin ang magsasabi na to remove it, na magkakaroon ng commitment? Kahit pa paano, meron siyang balls to, to uh, claim our territory against a superpower. Earlier, President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. said that he is not aware of any agreement to remove the grounded ship and revoked if ever such agreement does exist. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. China's allegation that the Philippines allegedly promised to remove BRP Sierra Madre from a union shoal through verbal conversations needs thorough investigation. According to former presidential advisor on political affairs, Ronald Llamas, the president's statement regarding the issue seems unclear. The president should be the first to know about the issue, along with the Department of Foreign Affairs. 
BRP Sierra Madre should be a rallying point for the country as it has become a symbol for, for Filipinos asserting their sovereign rights in the West Philippine Sea, which falls within REEZ. Liama stated that the country's political engagement is expanding, leading to many countries sympathizing with the Philippines on the Ayunian Shoal issue. According to Liamas, the damaged ship is not only becoming a rallying point for Filipinos, but also symbolizing the fight of other countries for freedom of navigation in the West Philippine Sea. Medyo nakakahiya mm. na yung uh, presidente, hindi alam yung nangyari. Mm. Diba? Yung practically yung sinabi niya eh. Dahil uh, mm. sabi niya, walang, walang ganyang mm. agreement. Wala akong alam. Pero mm. kung sakaling meron, meron. may resin ko. Yan. Kailangan purihin naman yung kanyang sinabi. Yes. Niya, oh. Pero ibig sabihin, Salamat kahit siya, kahit mm. siya, hindi ganun mm. kalila kung meron nga o wala. Pang merong oral na mm. oral. walang resin. So, mm -hmm. hindi ko sigurado yung legal basis ng China. Mm -hmm. Dahil walang nakasulat eh. Mm -hmm. Oral lang daw. Pero, mm -hmm. tama si Ina, kailangan alamin mm -hmm. kung alamin. sino ba yung nagbigay ng oral agreement. Joel Escorial, the self-confessed gunman in the killing of broadcaster Percy Lapid, has filed a motion to plea bargain before the Las Piñas Regional Trial Court Branch 254 earlier today, August 14. Escorial asked the court to allow him to plead guilty to a lesser offense of homicide instead of murder. If granted, Escorial will be sentenced up to 20 years instead of reclusion perpetua or life imprisonment. Meanwhile, Lapid's camp will allegedly study the motion of Escorial. The Bureau of Corrections relieved from post about 100 of their personnel, including some officials, amid probe over the discovery of contrabands retrieved from the new Bolivid prison. Dante Almento tells us why. Due to the issue of contrabands smuggled inside the new Bolivid prison or NBP, Bureau of Corrections or BioCor Director General Gregorio Pio Catapang Jr. revealed he relieved 100 BioCor personnel, including 20 officials. Yung mga, mga matitigas ang ulo talaga, uh, skala wags ng tawag mo dyan eh, hindi na empleyado eh. Katapang stressed those relieved officials are the culprits of the entry of contraband such as intoxicated liquor. The relieved personnel and officials are put under investigation. Sila talaga ang mga ano mga culprit no Of course may kasamang PDL Yan ang problema ko eh problema na yung PDL pero problema pa yung tao So sana nako lulugar ang hirap talaga lumugar In the recent inquiry by the Senate Committee on Justice and Human Rights at Bucor, Senator Francis Tolentino disclosed the presence of liquor and illegal drug inside the National Penitentiary is still happening. Meanwhile, amid the controversies the Bureau is facing, Katapang stressed he will remain as Chief of Bucor. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. had already ordered the Department of Education to conduct a study regarding a long-term approach on how to increase teachers' salaries. Nel Maribohok reports. Department of Education Secretary and Vice President Sara Duterte emphasized that President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has already ordered them to conduct study on how to provide salary increases for teachers aside from what they annually receive under the salary standardization law. So we're waiting uh, for the results of that study na uh, nandoon yung increases and then nandoon din yung um, pagkumpara niya sa inflation at sa mga economic indicators, forecast ng economic indicators sa mga darating na tao. 
VP Sara and President Marcos were both present during the Brigada Escuela activities of the DepEd at the Victorino Mapa High School in Barangay San Miguel, Manila, where the latter also donated 1 million pesos to the school in addition to paints and cleaning materials. Meanwhile, President Marcos expressed his support for DepEd's Matatag Curriculum, saying it is a significant program suited for Filipino students. PBBM emphasized that the new curriculum aims to strengthen the country's international score, especially when it comes to science, technology, and mathematics subjects. It's uh, very significant because here we are trying ang sinusubukan natin gawin. I ayusin ang curriculum para maging mas patay sa panangailangan ng mga mapapatang Pilipino. Kasi ang kasama na rin dahil yun. especially when it comes to uh, STEM, ang uh, na STEM subjects. Uh, also, binibigyan natin, binibigyan natin ng pagkakataon yung mga after 10th uh, grade na mamili kung sila ay mag-vocational, uh, mag, uh, mag-technical training o itutuloy nila. The DepEd recently launched the Matatag curriculum which aims to decongest the current K-12 curriculum and which includes a reduction in the number of competencies and is more focused on development of foundational skills such as literacy, numeracy, and socio-emotional skills for kindergarten to grade 3. Nel Maribuho, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. And for the news abroad, asylum seekers on the BB Stockholm barge were evacuated after a harmful bacteria known as Legionella was found on board. The home office contractors were informed and additional testing was claimed necessary to assess the risk. Ruth Bahe tells us the details live. Good evening, Ruth. Good evening, Marielle. Home office contractors were informed about the presence of the possible deadly Legionella bacteria on August 7. The same day, the 39 asylum seekers boarded the BB Stockholm barge, but it took four days before they evacuated, according to the Dorset Council. Legionella is a type of bacteria that can cause a severe form of pneumonia called Legionnaire's disease, which can be found in the water and can spread through contaminated droplets. The council received the initial test result on Monday, informed the barge operators CTM and Landry and Kling, who are responsible for the barge on behalf of the Home Office, and sought guidance from the United Kingdom Health and Security Agency, or UKHSA, on Wednesday evening for potential health risk. According to Landry and Kling's spokesperson, they are working closely with the local authorities to ensure safe and appropriate housing for the service users. They have followed all recommendations from Dorset Council's environmental health as well as the protocols from the UK Health Security Agency and Dorset NHS. The Home Office stated that the safety and well-being of asylum seekers are their main concerns. As precautionary measure, all asylum seekers on the barge have been evacuated to alternative lodging. Back to you, Marielle. Thank you, Ruth Bahe, for that live report. Ukraine has gained a partial but significant success near the village of Robotin on Friday, according to the General Staff of the Armed Forces. The Institute for the Study of War stated that even limited gains by Ukraine are significant, with Russian forces having dedicated significant resources to defend the area. Meanwhile, Russia is attacking near the northeastern region of Kopyansk, which fell to Russian forces at the start of the war but was regained by Ukraine after only six months. A mandatory evacuation has also been ordered for Kopyansk and surrounding areas this week as the Russian shelling intensified with claims that Ukrainian positions have been captured. We'll share more global stories with you later. But for now, back to you, Harleen. Thank you, Marielle. For those watching our live streaming on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. 
Department of the Interior and Local Government Secretary Benjamin Abalos Jr. will be reviewing the doctrine of responsibility within the police organization. This will include an assessment of the existing three-strike policy in the Philippine National Police. Leia Ilagan will tell us why. and local government secretary Benjamin Abalos Jr. wants the chief of the Philippine National Police to exercise an elbow room of flexibility. This is in connection with the recent irregularities involving some police personnel in Imos Cavite, who forcibly entered the house without search warrant and a killing of Jemboy Baltazar in Avota City due to mistaken identity. Abalos stated that PNP Chief Police General Benjamin Acorda Jr. may exercise flexibility in removing police officer. Ang nakikita lang namin is giving more flexibility sa ating Chief PNP. Hindi niya na kailangan antayin pa yung three strikes. For me, ha, uh, yung three strike policy kasi maganda naman niya. Pero we should have that elbow room kay Chief PNP. That's my own personal opinion here. Kaya yun ang pinag-aaralan. Hindi na kailangan antayin pa ang three strike. Kung tingin niya na gano'n ang magnitude, patanggal, pwede niya na patanggal. Abalos also remarked that everything in the said operation which resulted in the death of Jim Boy was wrong. Mali talaga yun eh. Maling, maling, mali ang nangyari rito. Unang-una, warning shot. There are, there are elements that kailangan ka... Nasa procedure yan eh. At ang pinakamali sa lahat, babaril ka na lang basta-basta pagkatapos nando na, eh, hindi mo palang kinuha yung bata. Lahat mali. <coughs> Kaya nakakagalit eh. The DILD Secretary assured that the investigation of the incident will continue to seek justice for the death of Jimboy Baltazar. Leia Ilagan, you went... Meanwhile, an agricultural group is projecting an increase in rice prices in the coming days. However, the government believes that controlling the price of rice is not yet necessary. J.P. Nunez will tell us why. The price of rice from retailers may reach 54 pesos for well-milled and 49 pesos for regular milled varieties, according to the Samahang Industria ng Agricultura or SINAG. This increase is a result of the higher price of rice in the world market and fewer harvests during these lean months. Kung maubos yung mga stocks ng uh, mga retailer, so tataas, tataas ang presyo talaga. However, the group believes that a shortage scenario by next month will not happen. Yung sinasabi nila ma masyashort tayo sa se September, hindi natin nakikita magsyashort tayo sa September. So, marami tayong stocks na available. So, yung October naman, start na yung anihan. So, wala tayong problema. Lawmakers also visited Mega Q Mart in Quezon City this morning to see for themselves why agricultural product prices are moving. Sa totoo lang po, nakita po natin yung World Mart talaga may effect. Pero pwede ay secure din natin yan. The Department of Agriculture said that they will not implement price controls yet. Ang SRP ginagamit nila naman sa adjusted retail price. Pag nakikita naman natin may paggalaw ng presyo na hindi maganda. Pero on the price control, I think sa for now, mukhang wala naman tayong emergency sa nila. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The local government of the gig remains firm in the Supreme Court's decision to transfer 14 schools in enlisted men's barrio or embo barangays to their jurisdiction. However, some parents would rather stay under the jurisdiction of Makati City. According to the Department of the Interior and Local Government, the welfare of the affected students should be the priority for both cities. Alan Manansala will tell us why. Gig City Mayor Lani Cayetano shares her side regarding the land dispute between the city governments of Makati and Taguig. Siguro po malinaw na kapag ka ang pinag-usapan ay kapag ka ng mga bata, hindi mo dapat nasasakripisyo yun. Kung meron po silang legal preposition na ang sinasabi nila pag aari nila yung mga um, eskwelahan, hindi pa yun po pwedeng isasantabi natin para sa anong ibig mong sabihin dahil yung insist mo yan. Schools. I think that's not fair. 
according to Mayor Cayetano, the Supreme Court's decision regarding the jurisdiction in the Embo barangays is clear, so the Makati local government unit should follow it calmly, orderly, and professionally. Following the Supreme Court's decision, the Department of Education issued a memorandum order transferring the supervision of the school's division to Taguig City. Malinaw na sinasabi na ang mga eskwelahan na nakapaloob doon sa parcels 3 and 4 na sinasabi ng Supreme Court na talagang tagig na, final na, tag tagig na yun. Mula sa pagiging bahagi ng Division of Makati ay ililipat na no? sa Division of Tagig and Pateros. At lahat na ng mga pagpapasya ay manggagaling na sa superintendent ng Division ng Tagig at ng Pateros. However, some parents who want to remain under Makati's jurisdiction are disappointed. Eh sana kung matapatan niya yun, di okay lang naman. Kung madagdagan pa niya ng another service, eh di okay lang. Wala kami magagawa kasi ayun naman sabi, ano na ng Supreme Court eh. Kung dudusin mas, mas ano ako sa mga kati. <laughs> sa ilang years akong nag-say dito, maraking, malaking na itulong sa akin ng ano, mga kati. Eh kung sa tagig, dapat nung pa sila tumulong sa amin. Kung kailangan ng ano, yung pa nang nakukunin. Parang ano, Ha, parang nakakapanggigit, pero ang gusto ko pala Makati pa rin. Due to the tension between the cities of Taguig and Makati, the Department of the Interior and Local Government had to intervene. Interior and Local Government Secretary Ben Hur Abalos has stated that the LG officials should set aside the issue of true ownership of the school within the enlisted men's barrio or embo barangays. Isang tabi na lang muna yun. Madali na yun eh. Importante sa ngayon, Yung mga bata, makapag-enroll, makapag-aral, etc. Kung sino mamiyari, sino mag reimburse mag-usap na lang sila on the sides about that. No? Okay. I think sa health, ganun din ang gagawin nila with the DOH, ganun din, mag-uusap din sila about that and other services. In the latest statement shared by the Makati City LGU, they mentioned that their current goal is to continue providing assistance by distributing school supplies, uniforms, shoes, and other materials to the 14 schools within the 10 Embo barangays. Alan Manansala, QNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people, we give glory to God. The Pasay Regional Trial Court has dismissed the writ of habeas corpus filed by the camp of foreign pogo workers who were arrested at Rivendell Global Support in Pasay City. On August 1, the interagency task force raided Rivendell Global Support due to its alleged involvement in love scams, pig butchering scams, online game manipulation, and other online investment frauds. Earlier today, 101 Chinese nationals appeared in court. A week before, the same petition by 46 other foreign pogo workers were heard, but the court also denied the petition. Habeas corpus is a writ used to bring an arrested person to court to ensure no illegal arrest. For immigration violations, in fact, there, there is already a commitment order as well as uh, charges against them mm -mm. for those persons subject of the petition. That is the reason why the petition for habeas corpus was denied. It was denied actually. We'll be filing a motion for reconsideration. Yes, we're expecting the same thing because the previous habeas uh, corpus filed in the same court was actually been ruled denied. The Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation tells lawmakers during a budget hearing in Congress that their new logo design worth 3 million pesos is a low-cost project. JP Nunez will tell us why. During today's budget deliberation led by the House Committee on Appropriations, Kabataan Party List Representative Raul Manuel brought up the issue of the new logo of the Philippine Amusement and Gaming Corporation or PAGCOR. The lawmaker opposes the amount PAGCOR spent on the new logo design, which cost 3 million pesos. However, according to PAGCOR's chairperson and chief executive officer, Alejandro Tenco, it was a low-cost logo. He explained that the design is not the only deliverable for the project. Ang totoo eh, 
Yung designer po na yun ay parang nagkawang gawa din na tatlong milyong piso. Kasi po, siya po'y iikot sa buong Pilipinas. Siya po ay pupunta sa iba't ibang brands. Susukatin at titina, ano ba yung dapat na size doon sa bawat gamit po niya. Pagkor said they had to rebrand their logo because illegal permits were being used all over the world with their previous logo, particularly prevalent in Turkey, London, and here in the Philippines, according to their security group. Despite Chairman Tenko's explanation, Congressman Manuel remains unsatisfied. He emphasized that Pagkor should have utilized their in-house graphic designer to save money, just as the Banco Central ng Pilipinas or BSP did for their new logo. O oh, yung tatlong milyon, malaking bagay pa rin naman po siya eh. Marami sana ang pwedeng nakabenepisyo din kung nagamit ng maayos yung uh, ganong pera. Kaya po so far hindi tayo uh, kumbensido doon sa paliwanag bakit kailangan umabot sa ganon. Kagayan de Oro 2nd District Representative Rufus Rodriguez instructed PAGCOR to submit its procurement process details to the committee outlining how they arrive at their new logo. JP Nunez, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. And in other global news, 15,000 New Zealanders applied for Australian citizenship in less than six weeks after a new system was implemented last month. Maven Carrizo will tell us why. More than 15,000 New Zealanders have applied for Australian citizenship in less than two months since federal government implemented new pathways of the migration system last 1st of July. New Zealanders can directly apply for citizenship after four years of residency in Australia rather than becoming a permanent resident first. Also, New Zealanders who came to Australia before 2001 were already granted permanent residency. According to beneficiaries, this will also result to shorter wait times, less application fees, and easier access to support payments. Immigration Minister Andrew Giles said this is a fairer pathway that reflects the contribution of New Zealanders in Australia. Of the group, 500 already passed the citizenship test and will become Australian citizens soon after ceremonies around the country. Maven Carissa, UNTV News and Rescue, we serve the people. We give glory to God. Former Miss Korea Universe and now actress Lee Hani won the best from the East Award at this year's New York Asian Film Festival. Jihan Tamashunas will tell us why. Five of the movies that Korean actress Lee Hani has starred in have been shown at the New York Asian Film Festival since 2019. One of them is Killing Romance, directed by Lee Won Sook. The film earned Iha Ni the Best from the East Award. This distinction honors her outstanding performance in a film. I always wanted to do like the musical and everything mixed together. So that's how I decided to make this film. Killing Romance is a musical comedy film. That is why the cast have to really prepare for it. So we took dance lessons together, the three of us. Um, it's interesting but uh, because each character has a sort of different dance for the character. Um, but uh, these actors um, who, are, who are with me, they were just very natural with movement, so that was a really good experience. Lee Hani worked with her former co-star Kong Myung, who had just completed his mandatory military service. Um, so, hello, um, I am uh, Kong Myung and I play the role of Pomu in this film. Pomu is um, uh, a, a student who, uh, who continually fails in his college entrance exam, so as a result he's very stifled in his um, life and he's never um, done anything that he wants to do in his life, so I think that sort of repressed desires is transferred onto his, his, his love for um, the character of Yore. After more than a decade, Lee Hani also collaborated with award-winning actor Lee Sun Kyung, famous for starring in the movie Parasite and the series Coffee Prince. Oh, 
So when I met, when we worked for the first time together on Pasta, it was almost her first time acting, and I remember her being like a nervous first time actor. But in a decade or so, she's grown so much, so much as a human being and as an actor, and I respect her so much in so many aspects. So I wish to um, continue um, working with her in the future as well. Meanwhile, actor Bayu Ram, known for his scene-stealing supporting roles, is doing what he does best. My name is Pei Yuram. I play the character of Yongchan, who is the secretary fan club of Yore called Yore Bare. Um, uh, I'm a diehard fan of Yore, of course, and um, through a series of events, I um, get to help uh, Pomo and Yore in their journey. Um, when I first read the script, I thought that this film was something that was non existent in Korea, and that's why I wanted to be a part of it. Um, ultimately, it was just such a happy experience to, to be with this cast and crew. According to director Lee Won Suk, the unique concept of this movie aims to bring happiness to people. Jihan Tamashunas, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I am Mariela Toza reporting live from Perth, Australia. Good evening. The State Weather Bureau, Pagasa, has logged a record-breaking 60 degrees Celsius heat index in Kasiguran Aurora on Monday, August 14. This is the fourth day that the heat index recorded in the said town surpassed 52 degrees Celsius. According to Pagasa, if the heat index is in this level, the effect-based classification is danger and heat stroke is imminent. Pagasa also recorded a 45 degrees Celsius heat index in Calapan Oriental. Oriental Mindoro, while 43 degrees was felt in Roja City in Capiz, Ambulong in Tanawan, Batangas, Baler in Aurora Province, Tugigarao City in Cagayan, Dagupan City in Pangasinan, and at the Ninoy Aquino International Airport in Pasay City. According to Ana Solis, the Chief of the Climate Monitoring and Prediction Section or Climbs of Pagasa, the temperature is unusual because of the effect of El Nino is dominant when the southwest monsoon is weak. The Philippine Consulate General in Honolulu, Hawaii is in touch with local authorities as it monitors the wildfires in its several counties. In its public advisory, the Department of Foreign Affairs says as of August 12, there was no information if any Filipino nationals are affected by the wildfires. It adds Filipino authorities in Honolulu has posted updates on its social media pages and encouraged Filipino nationals to contact the Consulate General should they require any assistance. According to some schools in Quezon City, they have enough learning materials. This follows the kickoff of Brigada Escuela in the country while the enrollment count is still ongoing. Bernadette Tinoy details why. Public schools in Quezon City announced that they have enough learning and instructional materials as Brigada Escuela kicks off in the country. Schools officials stated that the central office will support them if there are reports of shortages in learning materials. Inihahanda natin ang ating mga classrooms, laboratories, lahat ng facilities natin para ito ay handa, handa na magamit ng ating mga mag-aaral. Marami namang mga dumating, even though kanina medyo malakas yung ulan, pero maganda naman yung naging turnout. Andyan po yung bayanihan spirit ng ating mga magulang, kung saan ah, nandyan po sila nire-repair yung mga upuan, at ang DepEd naman po ay hindi nagkukulang sa pagtugon. In Quezon City High School, there are now more than 2,000 enrollees for junior high school and more than 500 students have enrolled for senior high school. Meanwhile, in Kamuning Elementary School, 331 students have enrolled as of August 14. In Bagubantay Elementary School, officials mentioned that they project more than 1,700 enrollees until the opening of classes. The Department of Education reports that the enrollment period will last until August 26, while the opening of classes is set to start on August 29. Bernadette Tinoy, UNDB News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. 
As Brigada Escuela kicks off today, toxic-free and waste-free environment is encouraged to be practiced in schools. Gladys Tuabi will tell us why. Experts said there is a health risk to children when exposed to chemicals such as lead and mercury that can be found in things mostly found in school and school supplies. Ang lead po kasi ay isang neurotoxin. Ang pangunahing inaatake nito ay yung utak. Uh, pinapahina po ang, uh, ang, ang utak, lalong-lalo na ng mga bata. Dahil sila nga yung vulnerable dito sa exposure sa ganito. Uh, humihina talaga yung, yung development, uh, IQ development ng bata uh, pag na-expose sa ganitong klaseng lason. Thus, parents nowadays make sure that the school supplies they buy for their school children are safe and quality, aside from its cheap price. Sempre ko consider ko yung yung okay na brand pero hindi naman po ako namimili ng mahal na brand. Pumupunta ako ng Divisoria para magharap ng mga brand na okay naman pero hindi siya gaano kamahal. Kasi as a per as a single parent, pero na kong apat na estudyante na sinusuportahan. So kailangan ko talagang economize budget. During the kickoff of the Brigada Escuela today, Daughter Hills Elementary School closely guards against toxic material for the safety of the teachers and its students primarily. Ang gawin natin simple, laging safe ang school at malinis. Yun po ang uh, mabigat na simple lang pero malalim ang kahulugan nun. Ibig sabihin, uh, isaturate lahat ng mga toxic and waste na materials na nasa loob ng paaralan para maging safe yung ating mga estudyante pagpasok nila sa opening of classes. Meanwhile, parents are reminded to not only purchase school supplies that are budget-friendly, but also check its label and safety seal. Na hindi lamang dapat presyo yung pangunahing ginagamit na pamantayan sa pagbili. Alam natin medyo nagtaas ang presyo ng mga kagamit ng pang uh, eskwela ngayon. So bali, uh, kung may nagagabayan sila kung ano yung mga klase ng mga uh, kagamitan na magiging ligtas, halimbawa, karamihan sa napansin natin, ang mga kagamitan ay halos nakabalot na lang sa plastic, wala ni isang product information. Gladys Tuwabi, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. Our Kasang Bahai, as the world faces these trying times amid the various challenges and uncertainties, we are inviting everyone to join the Global Prayer for Humanity. Good day. I'm Brother Eli Soriano of the members of the Church of God International. I want to invite you to join us in a minute of prayer every day to pray for humanity and the whole world as we go through these perilous times. safety measures like washing of hands and strengthening of our immune systems may help us through this horrible predicament. There is still no precaution or cure more powerful than God's mighty intervention. And we need His intervention now more than ever. It doesn't matter what religion you are in or what denomination you belong. This is an invitation for all the people around the world who cares for the future of their family, friends, loved ones, and humanity as a whole. Everybody is welcome to pray with us. For more details, you can check out the description box below. Thank you very much and I hope to hear from you soon. May God bless you. we will leave you with a word giving glory to god from the book of proverbs chapter 14 verse 21 it says he that despiseth his neighbor sinneth but he that hath mercy on the poor happy is he and those are the reasons behind the news august 14 2023 reasons we deliver to you as they unfold i am harleen delgado and because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God.